Holy upsets, Batman. Let's get ready for another Philadelphia sports dish. My main man do is here. I'm the one and only big game dame. Very, no joy in Mudville, I'll say, because the Philadelphia Eagles, they lost to the New York Giants. I got, I got an interesting take on this, but I want to hear your opinion to kick things off, all right? So what do you think overall the game? What's your assessment? Um, just to piggyback off what I said last week, I don't think they were talented enough to be a favorite. And I was interested to see how, how would they respond. Mm -hmm. And they feel miserably. Um, when you're not that talented, you can't go. I think they were feeling themselves a little bit and thought they can just, like I said, roll the helmets out and they was just going to go ahead and take care of the Giants. Mm -hmm. And the Giants had that extra edge that the Eagles had previous weeks. It was like, okay, they coming into our building. People saying they're going to beat us. But Giants fans had, had to feel like it's a winnable game. How we've been mm -hmm. saying all season, okay, this is a winnable game if they play all right and everything. So um, I was disappointed in the game plan. I was disappointed in the execution. That's just, I was disappointed in everything, believe it or not, except the defensive coordinator. I know. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to stop there to let you get your thoughts off. But it was just... Um, I hope they learn from it where yeah, you're not good enough to just show up. I'll piggyback off of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm watching this game, and it was one of those games where they just laid an egg. Mm -hmm. It was a complete clunker of a game. People got really, people got way too excited when they beat New Orleans, and here's why. And they were like, oh, well, the rest of the schedule is sweet. Kind of to piggyback off of what you said, that the Eagles aren't good enough. Mm -hmm. Number one, did people really think they were going to run, run off like seven, eight wins in a row? I hope not. <laughs> I mean, seriously? So when I'm watching this game and I'm watching a team where their talent level is dubious, to say the least, mm -hmm. in, a, in key areas, as we saw at the end of that game, you know, they have one wide receiver. Correct. Um, let's be honest. Even the people who like Quest, I like Quest, but he's a role player. Mm -hmm. on, on a good team, he comes off the bench. Um, they weren't going to win. Seven, eight in a row. They don't have the talent, and that game was evident in that. They just cannot. The key, especially when you look at young young players, and Hurts in particular, consistency is a thing that, you know, in training camp people talked about. It's the thing. It's the toughest thing. The NFL is about consistency. That separates the good teams from the bad. That separates the star players from the mediocre players. And no, none of these young players are there yet. Um and I'm kind of with Devontae at the end where, you know, I like that. Seeing and when I heard how PO'd he was, you know, not getting the ball those last two possessions, where he's like, but coach, I won the Heisman Trophy. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's like, and Syrian, no. And it's like, I hate NFL coaches. You know, they do what they're going to do. Then they have a system in place, which is like, no, he's a playmaker, getting the ball. Um, what do you think? What do you think about, let's start there with Hurts. What do you think about Hurts? Um, <clears throat> for all the praise we gave him the previous week, um, he was brutal. Yeah, it, it just, I, I, there's nothing positive to take from his performance. And Cardinal rule: you can't turn the ball over in the red zone. Yeah. You, you just can't throw it away. Scream and throw it um, away. It is, it is, it deflates your team. You know, it is it, back breaking. And um, don't forget, they had the ball back coming back, come from halftime. So you yeah. kicked the field goal there. Um, it's all wins at that point. I don't. The play calling was puzzling. Um, the Giants was were doing nothing to stop the Eagles running game. They were getting five, six yards a, a clip. And this game plan kind of reminded me of the San Francisco game. It's, it's funny because remember the Atlanta game, we were all like, oh, okay, we see it. And then the San Francisco game, it was just like bombs away. They was just throwing bombs the whole game. Mm -hmm. And this was, was kind of similar. And um, the Eagles beat writer, I apologize, I, don't, I can't recall his name, but he said something interesting to me where he was just like, you know, Jalen Rager has seven targets. That's as many as Devontae Smith and Goddard combined. And it don't matter how you got to that point, but if you got to that point, something went dramatically wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you watch that game, you see it was just dramatically wrong. It, it was it was just bad. And then the, 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 the Sirianni people always say, oh, well, you know, this guy, he's, you know, I hear, I hear your criticism, but he schemes people open. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> like, you got Dallas Goddard, you know, one of the young tight ends who has the potential to be a star tight end. Very talented. You got the Heisman Trophy winner here, and you're not scheming to get them open. See, my response to that, too, is I think here we, we tend to overvalue our players. Um, Goddard, to me, he's a starting tight end. Yeah. I, star, that's going a little bit far for me yeah, personally. Potential. Yeah, like to me, he... He's a serviceable. He yeah. he's a good tight end. Devontae Smith. I mean, he, he's a rookie, and he's clearly their best offensive weapon. So that just goes to, to show you how limited they are offensively. And that's when I say when we just gotta watch this and evaluate it when it's all done because they are limited. Like I like you can you can scheme all you want. Who are you scheming for? Yeah. And you know it's one of these things where. You gotta kind of wonder about the direction, whether or not this is like the level of how much of a tank this year was. There's no veteran receivers on this team for key situations like this. Guy that just knows how to get to the right spot, get open, run the right route, get open. There's there's not a lot here to help a young quarterback, is what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to defend Hurts. He's brutal, but I think his brutality was symbiotic with the coach. He threw, and I knew it when the. Uh, Early in the game, when he started throwing the ball down the field, he that one play to Quez Watkins, mm -hmm. where you know go up and get it, and then Jalen repeats himself and repeats. Mm -hmm. It's like you're playing against NFL defenses. You can't be like you don't have the talent level to be throwing the ball and go up and get it, guys. You don't have that receiver on your team, um, you know. And if you do, you're not throwing it to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not throwing like, it to him. Um, listen. Uh, another thing, just and not to get into too much of the scheme and everything, but the underneath to the running back was there all game, and for some reason they just wanted just, to, he, he just wanted to continue to push the ball down the field. If you watch that last drive, that was there the whole game where they were dumping off the game well and and marching down the field, and the Giants took advantage of the Eagles, I guess, aggressiveness, and nobody knows why because the formula that got them the last couple wins, they didn't use. Yeah. And that's the thing. That is the thing when you have a rookie coach who's learning on the job because he's somebody's guy. I'm going to keep mentioning that. And then you have a young quarterback who's being honestly didn't play well, but he's being thrown at the walls because he's been given a rookie offensive everything. You know, that's what you're going to say. Inconsistency, where all of a sudden Sirianni's like, and he overthought it. I guarantee you, he overthought it. Where he's like, oh, they're going to, the way we're running, the Giants are going to take that run away. The Giants are going to do this. The Giants are going to do that. The Giants are vulnerable against the run. They're going to, and you could see it. You know, they'll they're bring people up. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to blitz. And, oh, well, we got to take advantage. We got to get them. Well, you, why do you go away from what you do? Mm -hmm. NFL coaching, overthinking, trying to be too smart. Mm -hmm. And it bites them. And what's the, what's the most disappointing about that? Like, I always say I hate when I can make adjustments and I don't see the, the team doing it. And to me, if you watch the Giants on Monday night the previous week against Tampa Bay, they were deflated. And you got to go in there and punch them in the mouth and get this. Like, you're supposed to go all out in the first quarter and make them quit. If you go out in the first quarter, jump up 10 nothing, 14-3, something like that, mm -hmm. I guarantee you the Giants are just like, you know, they, they, they're ready for the all season. But you let them hang yeah. around. You gave them some hope and momentum. And when you do that, game on. Yeah, and even if you, even if the first series, because what they even the first series, and I knew it when they, when they started hitting those passing plays. I'm like, this isn't good, you know, because they're getting away from what they do. Even if it's a boring three nothing first quarter where you just get a field goal, you run it, you run it right at them. But you know, and that's one thing where I got to kind of throw, if memory serves me correct, on the defense. You know, they, they kept the Giants off the board. Kudos, you know. But key situations, once again. See, listen to this. I, I'll do this. Because as much as we killed the defensive coordinator, coordinator Gannon, I, I, I'll give him his due this week. I, I'm going to say that, that was the only positive thing I took away from this game. At the end of the day, you hold any NFL team with 13 points, you should win that game. You should win that game. At the end of the day, like, and, you know. And the Giants' offense was not good. No, it wasn't. And it, the Eagles' defense, they – it was one of their better games. Like I said, we, we kill a defensive coordinator, rightfully so. But in this situation, they they put out a winning performance. Yeah, they, they absolutely did. Um, but the issue is, you know, just the lack of consistency overall. 
So they might come out, the Jets, same stadium, and play like gangbusters. I, I would hope because so. Because it's a lack of consistency. Well, but as you know, that's what's going to happen with a young team. It's growing pains. You know, you got to go through those things, and you got to hope that they only got to learn once. Yeah. That, that's, the, that's, that's the key. So moving forward, shot at the playoffs. Absolutely. I, I, listen, I wouldn't let this game, you know, be a killjoy and then you suck all the momentum out of the, the locker room. It's one of those, I would tell, look, let's learn from this, fellas. You know, we, we can't just show up and think we can beat anybody. If we don't put the work in, we can be beaten by any team in this league. But luckily for us, we control our own destiny. Let's go out. Let's get this next one. Go into the bar and see where we at in two weeks. Yeah, and think about it this because they have all those home games coming up. They're going to lose another game, probably the Washington game, one of the Washington games, okay? If they, if you thought at the beginning of the year Eagles go 9-8, and eight, that's a win because that Dallas game is probably going to be meaningless. Yeah, listen, at, so if 9-8 and eight, with this team, with this coaching staff? And what more can you ask for to be able to still evaluate and it's like still be something on the line, like – that's even better because now you get to see these young guys in pressure environments. And mm -hmm. and and this was, I think this was their first test, and they failed miserably. So now let's see that they'll they'll get at least two more tests before the season yes. is out. And let, let's see how they respond. Yeah, let's see how it is. And the goal this year, like honestly, if they're around at the end of the year, if they're around 500, it's a win. So remember that, Eagles fans, <clears throat> next year is the year when the ball starts moving. So did they mess around getting the playoffs every year ahead with this experiment, this Nick Sirianni experiment? Agreed. All right. Speaking of an experiment, <laughs> as the Sixers turned. So um, I'm a Simpsons fan. I'm going to quote Ken Brockman here. So you have an opening tirade you'd like to give us? <laughs> Listen, this is for Dow Mora. I am tired of watching this team without a true point guard. It's been holding us back since we've turned the corner from going through the process to the next step, whatever you want to call that, to being a good team, a contender. We haven't had a point guard, somebody that can run the show, orchestrate it, get us in our sets, Make an open jump shot. When you watch this team, it's just combo guard after combo guard. And this doesn't even have anything to do with Ben Simmons being sidelined or however you want to categorize that. You can go out and just get an NBA-level starting point guard to play with MB and to play with the shooters that you have amassed, and you will have a chance to come out of the East. I'm tired of the combo guards. I know everybody wants to talk about positionless basketball. You need a floor general. If you watch teams that win, they have a floor general or they have one of the best players in the game. And B can be one of the best players in the game. He has no help. And late game situations, he has nobody to get him the ball. These guys can't even throw into the post. And, and it's, it's, it's just... It's, it's enough. And just a little context, we literally just got done watching the end of the Sixers Celtics game where the Sixers lost by one. This is Wednesday. And literally it was that. And where and, they just like and B didn't even get it like a, a good look, period. And then to the people out there, I know you love Maxi. He's not a point guard. Definitely not yet. Curry's not a point guard. Shake Milton is not a point guard. They do not they do not have a point guard on this team. Ben Simmons, if he doesn't shoot, he's not a point guard. Yeah, yeah I was gonna add that if you didn't. Um and it's just is at what point, like like what are they watching? Like at what point do you say, get somebody in here and you your you, your head coach is a point guard? But all you gotta do is look at what happened with Phoenix. <laughs> just that franchise got turned around. But if all good teams have a floor general. They, and it's just like it's it's enough. This goes back to always how I say in the beginning. There was no leadership when this first started. The young players had to learn on their own. And there's nobody here that makes the game easier for MB. And I see why he gets frustrated. I see why he just goes through the motion at times because he has no help. He has nobody that he can depend on. Nobody to say, Steph, you need to be over there. You need to be over. There, There is nothing. He has to literally do everything to keep them in games. 
and it's it's just tired. So let me ask you this: two things. Number one, how much of a factor is the coach in this? Part two, how much of a factor is analytics in this? Don't get me started with analytics. We don't have. Now, I want to get you started. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> well, we'll, and we can get to, We'll do part two next week. I, I just think some with with the analytics, it's supposed to be a tool. It's not supposed to be the only tool. And so many of these GMs fall so much in love with the analytics that they just stop watching what's in front of them. You can analytic analytic me to death. The Sixers need a point guard. Period. There's nothing that you can say that will get me off that stance. And it's been glaring for four years now. They cannot close games. You want to know what the Sixers, they can get a 17, 20 point lead in the first half. And it will be gone within four to five minutes because Correct. they don't have anybody that can control the offense. And it's, it's like it's to the point where I'm not even invested as much in them right now as I should be because it's just like we it's know how frustrating. This is yeah. We know how the story is going to end they, they, in the second round. They cannot control the game because they don't have anybody that can control the game. And even when Simmons was here, this was the key issue. This was the issue consistently, like, you know. Um, and they don't need a star point guard. They just need an NBA-level starting point guard. My whole deal is, in regards to the analytics, these last couple of years I've seen so many players pass up twos for threes, mm -hmm. and then the guy they fire the ball to misses the three. <laughs> Where I'm like, you just passed up a layup for a missed shot. You know, like, how does analytics, you know, in the NBA – it's almost if you're like a, if you're like an old school basketball fan, roll up your sleeves, play defense. It's almost sometimes it's unwatchable when you watch this. And I think the Sixers are such an analytics team where you just see this. They just think just keep firing with more three point shooters with, you know, that'll solve it. Like with Joel and beating, go get her, Ray, go get her, Joel. Like, you know, like all right. So what? You got all these three point guys, but no one runs a damn offense. So it's just clunky and cling, and it's just awkward, you know. And it was awkward last year. It's awkward when Ben Simmons is in there. I'm gonna throw a, a journeyman name out there who's at the end of his career, who's somewhere he's somewhere he's not playing. And if you brought him here right now, he would be the Sixers starting point guard, and he would get his team some juice. And his name is Goran Dragovich, and he's up in Toronto right now. Right now, I would go get him. It, he has a massive contract, so I don't know how it can work out. But you wouldn't have to give up anything of significance to go get him. That's what I mean. Just get somebody in here and see what it looks like with a competent point guard. And I mentioned Phoenix last year, but I forgot to mention the, the NBA champions. <laughs> you know, they got a point guard. Yes, the NBA Finals last year. But analytics says, like, you know, the nerd from Harvard with a spreadsheet that he emails these GMs and, you know, I don't know. I don't think there's anyone, you know, outside of Maury who, for, for, since this has begun, knows basketball. You know, I think this is an analytics driven team. And once again, I think kind of like a lot of the issues the Eagles are having with their owner. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the teams kind of mirror each other in a lot of ways. Um, I just don't see an owner that understands it. I think the Eagles overvalue analytics as well. I think the Sixers overvalue it and it's killing them. I mean, I know I've been on a, a tyrant right now, but just just get a real point guard and see what it looks like. Just get a point guard and l let's see what it looks like. That's Go. not what the spreadsheet says, though. Watch, watch how much easier life is for MB if he gets somebody that can consistently get him the ball in the post. Maybe, maybe, you know what? Maybe he'll want to go in the post now because he's not getting double teamed and got to go from one side of the lane to the other side of the lane to the other side of the lane with yeah, somebody like Jalen Brown sticking around. Him, yeah. And the point guard can't get him the ball over Jalen Brown. All right, I'm done. I'm and then the three-point shooters are just all running around and they're trying to get their stuff in and shoot. And it's just like, what? What? what is this offense? It's frustrating. Jalen Brown fronts you. You see people who can't stick him. And the Sixers cannot get the ball into the post when he's posting up. Yeah. Mean, it's mad. Man. So, and he's red ass because we literally just watched the game like right before we did this. Yeah, I am in 100% full agreement with you. I don't like it's inexplicable. I hate analytics because when you take a tool and it becomes, and this is a lack of talent, when you take a tool and it becomes an, uh, an absolute that you must use, you know, there you go. It's like if you were, you were building a house with all hammer. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. No screwdriver. No nothing. Just all hammer. So good luck with that. You know. Yeah, at least they got their shooters. Yeah, it's gonna be like a little Bill building his house. That's my obscure reference for today. Unforgiven. All right. 
So that's going to pretty much be it. So literally each week goes this way. Sunshine, gloom. Sunshine, <laughs> gloom. Which tells you we got some mediocre behind teams in Philadelphia. Because one week things are looking up. One then it's like, uh, we don't even talk about the Flyers. Because, well, oh God. <laughs> you know? So that would be another one. So we're just... We're, we're trying, people. We're trying. A little bit of sunshine. They lost six in a row, I think. Yeah, so we're here. <laughs> yeah. so we, we're try- the people. We gotta help us out. We're trying over here. You know, we bring a little. It's just gloom and doom. But next week will be sunshine. We'll beat the Jets and the Sixers. will ring off a couple in a row. Max, you have a couple good games. So if it, I feel like we're in Groundhog Day. Uh, maybe one out of two ain't bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. If we get one out of two, I'll be happy. All right, that's going to be it for the Philly Sports Dish for this week. We will be back next week, same bat time, same bat channel. You can find us on every social media outlet. You can also find us where you find your favorite podcast. The best like, shot, throwing it back, best shot of sports that you're going to find anywhere. Join us next week. Thank you for the support. Go Birds. Sixers, what are you doing? Get on that.